Cool, cool. So, guys, thank you very much. Uh, jumping on weekly uh, training here, Freedom Team. Uh, this morning, Brittany Zappitz down there in Orlando. Nice and warm in Orlando. She's bragging about the weather when we first got on here. So, anyway. <laughs> But uh, no, it's great to have her on. Uh, I appreciate you doing this, Brittany. Three-time Icon agent. You've been with EXP for three years? Hit Icon all three years? Is that right? Yes. Okay. In real estate for 21 years plus down there in Florida. So uh, what you were in the, uh, what was it? The top 20 under 40? Is that what it is? Yes. Yes. I passed that mark. I turned 40 last year. So there you go. I don't know if I'm losing those bragging rights now. Yeah. I got a couple <laughs> more years before I turned 40. <laughs> just kidding <laughs> so, anyway but no i appreciate getting on here we're going to talk about luxury real estate um i've got my pen and paper ready i'm looking forward to it guys uh, just remember keep yourselves muted if you have questions along the way you can ask them or put them in the chat whatever Brittany, however you want to do that uh but we'll definitely get questions answered before we're all done here but uh Brittany, go ahead it's all yours take it away Absolutely. Thank you, Jeff, for having me on and happy new year's everyone. And thanks for jumping on. I know this time of year is a little crazy as we're trying to get into the swing of 2022, but still, you know, trying to hang out with family. And if you have the kids, they're home from school. So, um, happy new year, looking forward to a great year. And, um, so let me just start by, I'll share my screen, but just kind of telling you a little bit about, um, myself and the background and you know why I'm really happy Jeff got me on this call to share this with everyone. Um, can you guys see my screen? My, can you see it? Yeah, we see it. Okay. So I started in real estate um, right out of high school, um, selling government for closed homes, which is a long, long, long way away from luxury real estate. Um, I really started the joke is because I had good handwriting. So this is going to date some of us. Um, this is back when we had carbon copy contracts. Um, so my good handwriting came in handy for my family because they were getting their contracts rejected from writing like kindergartners. So I didn't mean to go into real estate, just ended up here. Um, I mean, I think our average price point at the time was probably $75,000. Um, I quickly learned after I learned the business that that is not a price point I want to stay in um, for the rest of my life. So I had to find ways to adapt and change. Um, so about six years ago, we started um, hosting this luxury caravan in our market. Um, and that's what most of this presentation is about is um, about how a simple concept actually increased all of our price points um, and where it really came from was consistency. Um, give me just one second. If you guys don't mind, I'm gonna turn off, well, I'll leave it on um, my camera just anyway. So, so it really came from consistency and that's what the slideshow presentation is going to show you is how you can dedicate um, no more than three hours a month consistently do this. You can um, have a lot of fun. It gets you around agents that you know have done many transactions with, but maybe have not got to see on a regular basis in your market. And by doing that, um, especially with our inventory being low, we're able to share other listings, just kind of like talk about other listings we have coming up on the market in our zip codes um, that necessarily aren't luxury. But I've done many transactions from just showing up at this luxury caravan and they're like, hey, I have one coming up in Twin Rivers next week. And they'll tell us about the um, property and before it's even on the market, they're in contract. Um, by just this event that we host once a month. Um, so it's how to host a luxury caravan in your market. Um, let me go to the next slide. I just got to figure out how. I usually have it in presenter mode, so maybe it's this one. Um, does that take me to the next? 
no, hang on. Sorry about this. I'm not the, okay, there we go. I just got to click here. Um, so I don't think that's the slide I want. Hang on, bear with me one second. Okay, we're gonna roll with that one, it's fine. So how we do this is once a month consistently on, and you can pick your days, we do it the um, second Tuesday, Wednesday of every month. We meet at um, a house. Typically it's one on the caravan, but um, in other times we've met at builder houses. So if you have a new development that's in towards the luxury market in your area, you just stop into that builder. Hey, you know, Terry with Pulte, do you mind hosting 25 agents giving us coffee and breakfast at nine o'clock in the morning on Wednesday? They're always going to say yes, um, because who doesn't what builder in town doesn't want 25, 30? I mean, we've had upwards of probably 60 people at times out on this caravan, um, they're always gonna say yes, they're always gonna host. And then you're also getting in front of that builder as you know, maybe someone that specializes in the luxury market because you're the one setting it up. So there's a huge advantage to you being the one that's the driving force behind hosting the caravan versus just um, you know, tagging on to the caravan. So where it starts is you, do the groundwork and the groundwork is pulling zip codes in your map of a farm area, make it hyper local and then determine what's luxury in your market. Originally we had 500,000 um, and this, you know, we started back five, six years ago. So 500,000 was luxury then. Now even $600,000 is questionable. Um, even the $600,000 houses now in our market are looking like track production. There's nothing really luxury about it. Um, so, and then as you can see, all of this area, which you're not familiar with my area, but it's Seminole County. This is all like Seminole County zip codes, but we're not going to be going all the way across town. So we're actually on the split of Seminole and Orange, but we just pulled an area of that we kind of all work and drew the map. So you don't want to go just take a whole county because that's too time intrusive um, to do that. So it's a really hyper, hyper local area. So that's where you want to start is where do you want your luxury market to be? Um, let me go to the next slide. So then you set up a private Facebook page it is very strict, um, the Facebook page. We're not letting in, um, we're not letting in title reps. We're not letting in mortgage reps. Trust me, every title rep and mortgage rep wants to be involved in this. Um, we really keep it very closed and you can run yours however you choose. Um, but because we are coming from so many different offices, we're inviting um independent brokerages, Colwell Bankers, Remax, Century 21, EXP, et cetera. You get my point. Um, to this, everybody has an affiliation with a title company or mortgage that's wanting in, and we did not want it to go in that direction. Um, we really wanted to keep it really realtor-based. Um, so we don't let them into our private Facebook page. Um, so the second Wednesday of every month, starting at nine o'clock, sharp. Um, you're done with the builder by 9.45. Um, so I kind of went over this, you know, pull your luxury market, um, invite agents to join you to do the caravan. This is going to grow. Our original luxury caravan probably had about 10 of us on it. Now our list, our sign-in list is probably over a hundred agents that try to attend the luxury market. Can I ask something, Brittany, real quick? Sure, absolutely. Okay. How many homes do you pull into it typically, like on a typical caravan? How many homes do you go see? Um, the most we've ever had is five. Okay. Um, 
And that's where this next slide will come in handy. Okay. Um, sorry, this isn't very, this one's blurry. I, this is the best I could do with it on this amount of time. Um, I, I planned on updating uh, it. No, I, I have get my point. finishing up. Uh, yeah, no, I'm finishing up Jerry Care. Hold on. You guys, just a reminder, keep yourselves muted, okay? There we go, I got it. Go ahead. Um, so the most we've ever had is five, but with the inventory issue that we're experiencing in our market and probably a lot of you in your market, um, like last month, there was one <laughs> and there was two. And then the second one sold before we even got it to caravan. So right now it's a little, it's, it's small, but when the inventory does open back up, that's where keeping the guidelines and the rules are really important. Um, so we originally started with the top 50 producers of luxury real estate in that direct area. Um, next step is set up a list of properties that you want on your first caravan. Send out an email, invite all the agents to it. Um, put all these, make a sign in sheet for all the agents, put their phone number, a spot to initial. Um, leave a blank line, leave some blank lines to add new agents, encourage the agents that are in the top 50 to bring their colleagues to it. Um, and then set the rules. So the rules for ours is you must have at least, so the top 50 agents, they had to have done a luxury transaction within the past 12 months. Um, they must attend, um, a luxury caravan in order to get their house on it. So say that they, the top 50 kind of get like an exemption card to get the ball going, but then say that um, Colleen, a top 50 agent brings Megan. Well, Megan's never sold a luxury house, but she has a brand new $1.1 million listing coming up. So so Megan isn't allowed to put her house on the list until she's attended one luxury caravan, because what was happening a lot is all of a sudden your one hit wonder realtor that got finally a luxury listing is like, oh, I want to be in caravan and I want my listing on there. Well, when we did have more inventory, why is it fair that we're cutting out Kim that's shown up to every um luxury caravan because we only have five spots and Kim oh Kim gets multiple luxury listings a year so why are we going to cut Kim's listing that is a producer and showing up just to get this new agent in on the list um so if that makes any sense like your guidelines are very 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 strict if they don't show up they can't just put their house on the on the caravan um and then the property must be on the MLS the day before caravan in order to have it on caravan. You cannot have a property that's coming up. Um, so that was a very strict guideline. And, and we had to learn the hard way and make changes and then make sure that we didn't allow gray area because it did start getting a little... Um, controversial and we don't want people to get mad at the group so whatever the rules are that you set just be very strict on them to where you're not showing favoritism towards um one office or one brokerage um i guess why i'm here i'll make it a very very strong sell point this is not an agent attraction whatsoever event um Listen, we're all in real estate and whether people want to throw stones at EXP and say, all we do is attract agents, that's nothing different than what they've all been doing for years and years and years prior to come. Attracting agents is the business, um, but you just want to make sure that it's not done there. So there's been so many times I've been at Caravan and an agent will come up and talk to me about EXP and I can see the other eyes watching me. Um, especially with it being the EXP model. Um, so I just am really, really careful. I may slide them a card or just say, Hey, let's do coffee soon. And then I just try to get away from the conversation, um, in a way. And 
I know that sounds crazy because you're like, Brittany, you're in the attraction industry, but um, you really want to make it to where um, you don't make a whole brokerage upset in attending this um, this mastermind of luxury caravan. So uh, just maybe a tip or trick, just be very, very careful. Make your little notes, reach out to them when you're not with the agents. And, um, um, and then also the same goes for them. If you see them attracting agents, which is going to happen, um, try to put a stop to it because that's, that's not the goal of this, even though it's going to organically happen if you do run this. Um, so this is what the email looks like that we send out. You send it out the Monday before um, caravan. And it just says exactly where we're going to meet, um, who's going to be catering, where we go in the order, and then add the gate codes to it. Um, and you can, if you're, so say that we don't get a builder to sponsor. That's our ideal thing because then it's not coming out of any of our pockets. Um, the builders paying for the breakfast, but if not, then we have rotated around offices. So we'll go to the Keller Williams office. We'll host it. And then we'll go to the Remax. When you are the host, you can bring in your preferred sponsors, um, like your lender and title, um, to help offset your cost. Um, so that's the only time that we bring in the preferred sponsors and also that preferred sponsor, if they want to, after we finish this list of homes, especially when we have like, four, then the agents that have time afterwards will go to lunch. Um, and you can bring in your lender and say, Hey, do you want to pick up all these agents lunch? Um, that's a good time for you to actually spend extra time with agents that you necessarily would not have met. And, um, you know, they're appreciative if the, the sponsor comes in then and picks up their lunch. And I can post this on, um, this PowerPoint to where you guys can copy it, um, onto the, the group as well. So you don't have to take detailed notes right now. Um, I might as well pause right now. Does anyone have any questions that you can see at this point? Good stuff. I can see it. So you, when you started, you started with 10 agents roughly? Um, well, we invited um, probably 20 or 30. Okay. I can't even remember. But because it wasn't um, kind of trending, we didn't get that good of attendance, but I can guarantee you when after our first one, we had so much fun and we were, you know, all posting on Facebook and it was like, oh my gosh, you know, you had Brad from Colwell and you had Darlene from um, Keller and EXP at the time wasn't a thing. Um, my license was at a different company. You know, um, you had all these people that got together and had fun. I want to go to the next one. Oh yeah, I got that invite. And so the next one, the attendance grew and the attendance grew. Um, and then we've done some really, really cool things, which I'll share going forward um, with this whole concept. Um, and why I guess my mind's thinking of it, let me go back to something. So that hyper local zip code, you're going to get a listing say just for in my case in Lake Mary someone's going to get a luxury listing we use that we lose we use luxury caravan as a way then that broker can set up hey guys I know this is outside of our bubble but I'm hosting a broker's open wine and cheese sunset on Thursday at five o'clock I would love for you all to attend so we allow, that's how we get around not leaving our bubble is we we'll make sure that agent shows up and really promotes the attendance of their brokers open of whenever it is.
I could see too, and you you know how you know if you're you're on a listing appointment, it's a luxury listing, and they're choosing between three agents, and you have this as one of your tools, you know whatever that hey I'm part of this luxury caravan, we do this once a month, I'm going to be bringing fifty realtors into your house on whatever. I mean like you know that's a powerful tool I think to add in to help you get the listing. Am I oh right? yeah, I went them all day long on Sunday. <clears throat> I mean in our market especially though. I can't forget, I know they're interviewing. Um, we all have that selling point now pretty much yeah. because they're either interviewing me, Kim or Darlene type of, okay. type of thing or Debbie or, you know, sure. so, um, but, but, you know, it's how you sell it. So with that, with the selling point for the seller, because obviously they need to open up their home. So that's why this is very structured because if you have four or five, zero valley stream we know we're leaving caravan at 9 45 and we're going to be at valley stream from 10 i would say 10 o'clock till no more than 10 25 and then that's why it's very structured so that we're not inconveniencing the sellers too um so move on and it, this might answer a lot of your questions as i go through it and if not, we'll have plenty of time for Q&A um, at the end. So the selling point to the seller is also, listen, um, Mr. Seller, I'm going to have 25 agents in your house from 10 o'clock to 1025 on Wednesday. Would that be okay? And hey, with that, I'm going to have 25 realtors that give you feedback in that time. Um, is that something you're open to? They automatically say yes. And so, you know, you want to, you guys can tweak this in any way possible. Actually, I think since I made this live show, we have, we now have a spot um, that has the gate codes on each form um, because, you know, most of these homes are in gated communities and we were all like, what's the gate code? And, um, so yeah, this is the feedback sheet. Um, we make sure that the agent that fills out the feedback sheet doesn't put their name on it or their information um, at all, because this is going to your seller. That's kind of, we saw some people being kind of sneaky, like, oh, well, maybe if Dar Diane doesn't sell the house, then I'll put my info on it. So maybe they'll call me after, you know, and we were like, no, that's not how we're going to do this. Um, so we make sure that they do that and then that they're very respectful. And with this being said, you definitely want to preface that with the agents. You are being recorded. So watch your words. You know, um, agents have a way, especially when you get 25 of them together, of forgetting that. Um, so you definitely want to just remind them at every caravan we're okay if you take video. This is part of the reasoning for this is for you to use this for your social media. You can go live. You can, you know, so don't be, don't be petty with your listings. Let the agents use that time for their own social media syndicate syndication purposes. Um, so they have to be open-minded, the agents that are allowing the listing to be on there that yes, you are gonna see your peers posting your listing and they might not necessarily be saying that it's Diane's listing. Um, so being open-minded is very important, letting the agents on the caravan, using it for whatever social media purposes they want, um, and also reminding them that they are on camera and that these forms are going to your seller. So review the forms before you send them to your seller because you may want to throw a couple in the trash um, with not everything needs to be said to the seller type of thing. So these are lessons we've learned along the way in six years. So I'm trying to avoid any pitfalls for you guys um, and taking something that's great and making it not become great. <laughs> so, um, so I kind of went over a lot of this again, but this is the way the structure goes. At nine o'clock, we meet, people start to arrive, networking, eat at 9.30, pretty much exactly. Um, we let the builder do a quick talk off of what their model is. If we're not at a builder home, 
um, whether we're at the Keller Williams office or sometimes we'll just meet at the first listing if the seller's okay with it. Um, and then the agent who has the listing will provide the breakfast. Um, then you go through the list and, and, you know, so each agent that was on the previous list will talk about their listing. And this is the time that we are off camera. So we're giving the hints like, guys, I think my listing's a little overpriced. The carpet is really bad. They have 10 different floorings in this house. I've told them, but they're not listening to me. Um, hint, hint, hint. So this is where we're kind of giving the hints of how we want the feedback to be um, not in the property. So we kind of, and then we tell them, you know, about the property, um, and also warn them like, Hey, you know, don't, you know, we sell a lot in rural property and they're like, Hey, we don't want you going out in the barn. Um, there's a sick horse out there or whatever it is. Um, or they're, you know, don't go in the mother-in-law suite. They're renting that out. Um, and then also this is where you're telling them where to park and encouraging them to carpool. So this has been one of my favorite parts about Luxury Caravan is I'm always the realtor. I have a big Tahoe and I'm always packing it in. And um, so I make sure, you know, I bring extra waters in my car and make it um, super duper fun and um, I'm always wanting to stay in the realtor position. And then I kid around with them that they're my buyers for the day. Um, because that's the time that I get to spend with agents that I necessarily never would have met. So I'm always being the one inviting. And I guess my cars become pretty popular. Um, but yeah, you want them to carpool to it so that you're not having 30 cars at a place that's not able to hold 30 cars at the same time in the community. Um, so moving on. So this is just kind of some, so I'm an admin on the Facebook page, but then I also have other agents that um, are from different offices. They're also admins. Um, on the Facebook page, you really don't want to head this completely with EXP based only. If you have, um, so this is my dear, dear friend, Debbie. So Debbie is one of the other admins of the group. Um, and so she is at Keller Williams. She runs their culture committee. So you can imagine the personality that Debbie has. That's what you want to do is you want to have a good relationship with the people spearheading it as admins that are from other offices so that it's able to be more of a collaboration and not make it look like EXP only. Um, so maybe even in this scenario, um, because we did start this before EXP, I would consider a, allowing Debbie to send out the first intro email. Um, and you may want to even set up its own email address for it um, so that then you're able to funnel where those emails go. So that's just maybe a tip or trick. Um, so this is some of the social media. We always take a picture. Um, and I'm usually the one in control of getting the picture. So we always take a group picture at it. Um, and then we always, you know, I make sure that I'm thanking the people for attending um, so you can see, I mean, that's a large group of agents. That's not even our largest group of agents that we've had. And then during COVID, you know, we still did it during COVID during Zoom. Um, yeah, I, I already talked about this. I didn't realize I had a slide in it. It's been a while since I've done this presentation. So bear with me. Um, I think that's probably the last one. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much the nuts and bolts of Mastermind. And then, like I said, after you're done, do your post, post the pictures that you take during Caravan on it. Also encourage the agents that are on the luxury Facebook page to post their upcoming listings. You know, I know for us, we have a very clear, a very strong, clear co cooperation rule. But 
we can kind of roundabout post and really engage with the agents like, hey, I have a 3-2 coming up in Althea Woods um, under 300 um, DM me type of thing. You know, there's no way the board can get on to us for that type of thing because we're not using addresses and whatnot. Um, but that's what's really made this group so strong is that when we are there, we, um, we bring other properties into our market. Um, and with low inventory, it's this group has been a blessing. And then we know that we know, like, and trust these agents. So if I have two of the same exact offers, um, you know, what's the odds? I have won offers by being a part of this group because they're, they're going to choose my same exact offer over, you know, seller, look here, don't look here as much as they can do that. Um, so all in all, the group is a win, win, win for three hours consistently a month that you put in it. Awesome. So that's pretty much. How long have you been, doing, much, this, long you been um, doing this? Um, I would say about five years. Okay. And that's why so much of this was like giving you guys advice on tips and tricks that I've learned along the way. Yeah. Um, Cause we have had to adapt and um, you know, change things that, you know, weren't showing favoritism or, and that's, what's super duper important is to keep it very open-minded and keep the rules, the rules with no gray. How do you, what are some ways, I mean, I'm just trying to think here, think it through. How do you use this, say, to pick up more, to pick up more listings? How is there, you know, like. So it's organically done that. Okay. Um, because now that we've been doing it so long, um, when I do get a seller, so my main zip code is 32766 on that map. Um, so by the time I had my seller, um, I'm able to show them, you know, Hey, I've, I've been in that house. I've been in that house. I've been in that house. I know this comp. I know that comp. Mm -hmm. Um, this is what was wrong with that comp. So a, when you are talking with that seller, you're, you are an expert because they, most of the time, the sellers in your luxury market, they know the other houses too, because that's their friends. And they, they've been in some of, you know, some of those houses too. So it helps with the sellers. Then it helps because of the social media, because people in my zip code that maybe didn't know I sold luxury real estate now are seeing me consistently post higher end homes. Um, so then people are like, oh, Brittany does know Live Oak and Mills Cove. She's the one to go to. Um, cause that's something that the other agents aren't doing. So it helps with that, with your social media presence. Um, plus you can see, you know, if I know that Diane took a listing in, um, Mills Cove and it was a $2.5 million listing and she had three offers in one week, I'm like, oh, ding, ding, ding. I am putting together a package and I'm going to. I'm going to get a package of high-end material in front of every homeowner in Mills Cove. All I have to do is put a little bit of time into that. So I'm seeing the neighborhoods that are really selling fast. And, I, and then I'm like carving out time in my day to specialize market to them. Um, you know, with COVID, I haven't door knocked, but I did do a little bit in, in exactly that neighborhood Mills Cove because the houses had such high demand and they're $2.5 million listings. That's awesome. Britt, stop sharing your screen for a minute so we can see everybody on here. And then uh, sure. there you go. That's some really good know. stuff here. What, what are some thoughts or questions that you guys have? Anybody wanna put out something? It's a pretty simple idea when you get right down to it. And I just see the consistency of doing it once a month like that, it just starts building. You know, a brand new agent could take something like this and run with it. I think to go to a builder to get them to sponsor that you're right. Like what builder wouldn't want, you know, 20 agents in their office on Wednesday morning at nine o'clock and they'll, exactly. they'll, they'll provide donuts and coffee, whatever. Oh, you they know. treat us good. Actually, they treat us great. <laughs> sure. That's awesome. 
Any questions, guys? Some good stuff here. What does it get you thinking about? What are some thoughts you guys have? Anybody? Could we uh, do this as a freedom team? As the freedom team or something? Could as spon a sponsor it that way, you know? Yeah. Maybe, whatever. Mm, I highly recommend it's very vague. Okay. Because people's initial thought is they're doing this to attract agents. Right. Um, and that really isn't the concept behind it, but I promise you it will ag organically happen. Um, so because I started this when I was at a different office, um, I'm pretty much the only EXP agent in it but now some have moved over. So, um, yeah, that's I would keep it very or organic. And that's why I said almost key in this is partnering up with a good friend from another office and just making, that's not the concept, but it organically works. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. How has this helped you with getting more luxury listings, Brittany? Because that is that primarily what you do now? So that's kind of why we started listings? it. That's kind of why we started it. I got, I mean, at the time it was a $1.1 million listing. Now that's not that much in our market, but you know, six years ago, I was like, how in the world am I going to sell this property? Um, and in Chiliota, Florida, you know what I'm saying? And so I did a broker's open and I ended up spending $1,100 on this broker's open, making it a beautiful broker's open. And then why we were all sitting around there drinking wine, eating cheese, we came up with this idea of how can we all save each other from having this luxury of an expense, but winning. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's actually where the concept originated from, mm -hmm. but it, it's helped me because now I've been in almost every single luxury home in our market in, in my zip code, every single one, because it just has, it's just caught on that, you know, whether they're thinking of selling or they just want me to see their house or whatever they just want to know you know you know what's the value or whatnot so it's just caught on by by I guess you are who you associate yourself with I was stuck in government homes for a while when all I was doing was you know this is pre-social media even but that's all I was focused on so now it it brought my focus into luxury and I'm able to collaborate with you know, an agent from Remax that does quite a few luxury a year, you know, and she's the one I'm like, Kim, get in my car. I'll drive you today. You know, and I'm learning from her why I'm chauffeuring her around to houses. Yeah. I think in the initial, the very first picture, I think if I'm thinking back on the presentation, it was like a, was there like a, like a minivan kind of thing or a bus kind of thing there or something. Have you used that at all? Or is it mostly carpool? We just keep it simple. Um, yeah. We we really keep it simple. Um, you know, the the bus would come in handy if um, you know, say the property in Lake Mary. Um, you know, that would be something that um, Barrett could do. Just this is one of the guys in one of the scenarios. Is he's like, listen, guys, I'm going to pick a party bus up at. Um, you know, 4.30 at Keller Williams, we're going to ride out to Lake Nona or Lake Mary. Um, we're going to see this listing. We're going to do the feedback sheet. I'll plenty of wine and cheese for you girls. And, and um, we'll be able to get the seller feedback. So that's where the party bus could come in handy. But no, we keep it simple because we are done by, I mean, we're all busy realtors. Yeah. So we are, we are in and out of these houses in 15 minutes. And we are either done by almost done and eaten lunch by noon it, it's very structured mm -hmm. so 
I love the idea. I love the concept of it. I've done the broker opens and you're right. And just, you know, if you do them right, it's, they're not cheap. You know, it's four or five hours out of your day easily, you know, whatever yeah. you're, you're kind of rolling the dice. How many people are going to be there? You know, whatever to get something like this going and just everybody pitch in and do it together like that. It's just, it's a great idea. I mean, and, and I spent $1,100 on that one broker's open mm -hmm. and probably had 20 agents there um, and a couple of neighbors and whatnot that stopped in. In the six years or five years since then of doing luxury caravan, even with buying my lunches every now and then, I probably haven't even spent $300 on this whole concept. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's a large difference. And, yeah. and my listings have gotten on there multiple times. Um, and my sellers are so happy. Um, and then they're getting the feedback from multiple agents that's saying the same thing typically. And, and there, there's been times with, you know, you get 25 savvy realtors together they're seeing things that I'm not seeing and I'm seeing things that they're not seeing and the testimonials that come back, like, guys, I was having trouble selling that listing. You guys went in, you guys caught that all the light bulbs were not bright white light bulbs. All we did was switch out the light bulbs and we painted that wall and we had a bidding war the next week, yeah. you know, because those are things mm -hmm. that, you know, and then for example, like when Scott Frost, this is a great story. Um, Scott Frost, he was the head coach at UCF, took him to the national championship and then went back to his hometown. Um, UCF football coach, he um, put his house on the market. So we hosted um, luxury caravan there and Scott Frost met us all, gave us all autographs um, super cool. We got to meet Scott Frost. It was great for me because it, it worked out really well. It was Valentine's Day and I had told him, I said, my husband, you know, is UCF alumni. He's like, oh, meet me after this. I have stuff for you. And he literally handed me because he's leaving UCF a entire box of autographed Scott Frost gear. And I had a great Valentine's Day present. <laughs> So, you know, so we have a lot of fun um, doing it and, you know, just. Here, here's a question. If you like say middle of summer, you know, whatever, when the more homes on, at least out of here, more homes on the market than any other time, you know, June, July, August, whatever. How do you narrow it down? Like, you know, if you got, as this builds and let's say you've got 25, you know, agents and whatever, there, there's say 10 of them want to get their homes onto the caravan this month. Like, how do you pick, here's the five that we're going to do. I mean, how do you narrow that down? That's where the rules came in very handy okay. because there was a point in time where, you know, if the inventory does get up and you guys, that's why keeping that hyper local really small is important. Okay. And you don't bend the rules of going out of the area. Um, you, you just don't, um, hang on one second. Yeah. You don't bend the rules at all of going out of the area. If it's out of the area, then they must host the brokers open. Um, and then you encourage those agents to attend. So you don't budge on your map and you don't budge on your guidelines attendance. So we had one agent that wasn't, um, she'd only attend when she got the luxury listing. But then all the other times that she didn't have a house on caravan, she wasn't attending. Well, then one of the times came up that there was, you know, how many, and that's where the admins had to get together and say, what do you want to do? And they're like, no, she only attends when her house is on it. We're on to you. Um, no, we're putting Allison's listing on because Allison has attended. So attendance is important. Um, and what we usually say is you must attend 10 out of the 12 in a yearly calendar okay. with, and then, you know, you can make it nine out of 12. Well, actually it's nine out of 11. The month of December, we usually just do a Christmas dinner, um, or Christmas happy hour, Christmas lunch, 
Um, we don't do typically in December, we don't do caravan. Mm -hmm. um, Great way to build some relationships, more relationships with more realtors, you know? Yeah. And, and then see how, you know, on the agent attraction piece of it, I understand keeping that out of this. I totally get that, but I could see how that would just, like you said, organically, it's just, it's, it's going to happen. There are going to be a few agents that, especially as EXP continues to grow, that they're going to ask you about it and, hey, can we meet for coffee? I'd love to hear more about how your model works, you know, whatever. Like that's going to happen, I would think. It, it yeah. absolutely does. They walk up to me and they're like, I want to talk to you. And I'm like, <laughs> I want to talk to you too. Yeah. Um, I, I said, how about I call you? And then yeah. as soon as caravan's yeah. over, depending on how eager they are, yeah, I reach out to them and, um, and you know, then mm -hmm. connect with them completely away from caravan. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you definitely want to keep it, um, you know, very much separated, sure. not talking business models, not talking brokerage. But the thing is you hear the rumors. So I knew based off caravan stuff was going down at this office. And I was like, ding, ding, ding. <laughs> so, um, so I did reach out to agents in the office, you know, and was like, you know, so by putting yourself in the environment, but not with an expectation of anything coming out of it from the attraction side is honestly the best way I would go into it. Yeah, for sure. Good stuff. Any other questions, guys, for Brittany? Any other comments, thoughts, questions? It's good, Julie. Can't hear you, but yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, Jeff. Yes, Brittany. Thank you. That was very, very good. And I'll tell you, even though we don't have really a luxury market per se where I am, um, you know, I may be able to evolve something like this on a lower scale because um, the luxuries that we would have, they're not really centralized. So I come from a small market. <laughs> well, that's what I said. Define your market and what luxury is. So, yep. you know, your luxury might be 350. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Yep. You know, and you might just want to start it at 350. But the thing of it is, is that if they list at 349.9, and this is where I'm coming in with the rules have to be strict, I promise you, you don't want to make the mistakes that we had the learning curve on. 349.9 is not 350. Mm -hmm. right. So sometimes I've even seen where agents were like, you ever price this just to get it on caravan and they'll just smile because yeah. that real comp price was 575, but they wanted to get the 25 agents in. So they pushed to 600 right. knowing they'll do a reduction. Right. And it would be something I think that would take a while here because they really can't even get people to participate in like agent open houses here. Agents just don't. And that's where that's where social media and having fun. I promise you, if you were showing them you were having fun and you get a couple heavy hitters from other offices, they don't even have to be heavy hitters. It's more about personality. Like I am all about having fun and everybody, you know, that's usually around me, we're laughing and having a good time, you know, and that's, you know, finding like minded people like that, like me and Debbie you get us together and we're like Laverne and Shirley, you know, like, and people want to be around you and we're having fun and we're posting on social media. It will catch on. Awesome. Thank you. That Thank makes you. sense. You're that welcome. was my first thought, Julie, when, when you said that was just, you know, yeah, make it a good time and just, you know, you'll draw some people and, you know, you might have, you might have seven, eight agents the first time you do it, five agents. You will, yeah. you will, yeah. but when but they, they see you having go, fun. Next month you got six, next month you got nine, next month you got, you know, 10 or 11. I mean, I could see how that could grow for sure. If you're posting a lot, you know, social media, getting it out there, getting the word out there and having fun with it. Awesome. Thank you. Sure. I think we're up to, I'd have to take a guess, but probably 120 agents on the list. Wow. And a lot of them don't look until they have to. All of a sudden their aunt is selling a $600,000 listing. And then all of a sudden they want to be part of our group and we get it, but okay, well then show up. And if you sell the listing next month, you're in. Yeah. Very cool. 
Any other thoughts, guys, questions, anything? We'll wrap it up here. I appreciate it, Brittany. Um, just a reminder, guys, we'll be back here next week at 9 o'clock. Okay, 9 o'clock Mountain Time, 10 Central, 11 Eastern. Um, that'll be our time every week going into the new year here. And then Thursday, if you want to come back, it's a different Zoom ID, but it's on the Freedom Team page. Um, you know, whatever, you'll see the ID on there for uh, agent attraction training for those of you that are wanting to do that at all. Um, you know, we're moving it from Monday nights to Thursday mornings, same time as this one. So we'll do that every week as well. I think that'll be easier than, you know, Monday night at eight o'clock on the East Coast. That's hard. You know, six o'clock here where we are dinner time. We have a lot of people asking us, man, can we do this during the day? So we're making that switch this year as well, which I'm excited about. So anyway, good things going on. Make it a great week, everybody. Brittany, thank you again. Great thank stuff. Great content. We'll have the recording posted up there so you can take these slides and maybe you could post that presentation just so people could actually get in there and even oh, absolutely. And some different things. That'd be great. You know, where you can post it as a file in the group. Sure. So have access to it. That'd be awesome. So guys, thank you very much. Appreciate you getting on here. We'll see you next Tuesday. We'll see you Thursday. Some of you. Okay. Have a great thank day. You. Happy new year, everyone. Thanks. Happy guys. New year.